What's going on guys, it's me Mojo Jojo Plays back again with another episode of Total Extreme Wrestling 2020 here with 21st Century Wrestling. This is Best of British Wrestling Episode 2. So yeah, last episode we had a 64-8 show, it was pretty bad to be honest. And yeah, that's a shame. Probably too much wrestling, not enough angles I'm thinking. So I'll put a few more angles in the show, see if that fixes things. But yeah, um, before the show, we had um, had a beast, uh, beast Bantam, a guy who's a uh, uh, just a normal guy really, certainly not in a storyline or anything like that. But he um, he said he's willing to uh, put over a wrestler called Ruin. So I'll just show you that that guy quick. This guy here, Ruin. I don't really have many big plans for him. However, Beast Bantam seems to like him. So this guy, he seems to like him. Who knows? Maybe, maybe it'll happen. Maybe it won't. I've got six months to do that anyway. So uh, it might be on his personal history actually. Just I forgot where it is, but it's on there some. It'll be there somewhere. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into the show. We start off with uh, <laughs> hmm. Well, off to a great start. Start off with the Cornell cousins in the ring, and uh, Edward Cornell is congratulating Tommy on his win in the main event last week. Just basically saying, you know, um, well done. You you beat you beat Kevin Jones. He's he's not really any good, but yeah, you won in the main event. Nice going, nice going, cuz. And Tommy's just saying like, well, I mean, <laughs> it's the main event. At least he was in it. Edward wasn't. So that's the gist of it. <laughs> that goes on for about ten minutes. It's just basically Edward Cornell being sarcastic and congratulating Tommy. 100 rated segment, so yeah, that's pretty good. Great start. Very good at improvising. Even with awful commentary, apparently, it's good. Then we're going to, ooh, a 70 rated promo. Both of them uh, performed very well. Um, Prince and DBF uh, get into an altercation backstage before Apollo's match. Uh, as, as you saw last last show, Apollo basically said that Daniel Black Francis needs to get needs to get out of the way or he'll make him get out of the way. And Apollo Prince is a he's a really young uh, rookie kind of guy. Um yeah. Both got great gimmick, which is good. But basically, um Apollo is up in gorilla position about to go out where he's interrupted by Daniel Black Francis, who's not on the show tonight, but he's here anyway to annoy him. And you're back, Francis. Basically, he says, "Well, I mean, you disrespected me last week, and God, you disrespected me. You made me look like you made me look like a fool. I'm not going anywhere." And Apollo is just they just basically get into a heated confrontation, uh, going back and forth. Ends with like a face off or something, but Apollo's music starts playing, so he quickly just leaves, goes down to the ring. Where he has a match with Andrew Lee. Apollo Prince gets a 59 rated. Uh, 59 rated. Andrew Lee with a 48. 61 rated match overall. I forgot to do something didn't I? Oh well. He uh, he was really off his game Andrew Lee was. With only a 48 rated match. Performance at least so. 15 minutes this went. He is defeated with an apology. I didn't know he was connected. Anyway, poor commentary and then no spinal impact moves and bad stamina apparently. Apparently 15 minutes is too long for Andrew Lee. Good to know. And we're going to our next segment. 57 rated, that's a lot worse than I thought it'd be. Right though. So this is uh, Hellbound. 
the you know, Hellbound faction are back again. And it's basically Jonathan Forst explaining his actions from last week. Why did he uh, tell his his evil posse here to go and to go and basically destroy uh, Bue Boulder and Darren Flynn? Jonathan Forst says they need direction. They need help. He can save them. He can help them become the biggest tag team in 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 this company in the world. All they need to do accept him as their leader as a leader and all of these beatings will go away he says he'll he's here to help to save the 21st century wrestling r- roster and whether people accept him willingly or he forces them to join then yeah then <laughs> either way everyone in this company will be under Jonathan Force and Hellbound is what he's trying to say. 57 rated angle, unfortunate. Why was it so bad? Because Jonathan forces an okay talker. What happened there? We have, um, oh. Bue Boulder and Darren Flynn are in the locker room. Not here again, but they're here to, they're young talents. They're here to watch and learn. So that's why they're here. But they see, um, Jonathan Force start talking about them on the screen. And they start, Acting like pretty creeped out by what he has to say, saying that he'll save them, and that oh they need they need help. He's willing to give them the help that they need, like that. But they don't want they're they don't want to do it. They're 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 courageous baby faces and stuff. So yeah, <laughs> too much. They can't improvise very well, which which is a uh, fair enough. Uh, I rated them on uh, the only stats that looked good, and it obviously did not work with a 32 rated segment like that. Up next, we have a new guy who you haven't seen yet. His name is Phil Harmonic. He comes out. He's a 18 year old. It's his rookie year in the company. And yeah, he's got good gimmick. Good at talking. He loves improvising, which is good. And the King of the Cruiserweights has automatically started. As he says, he comes down to the ring and basically says, I am the future of this company. I am already the best cruiserweight in 21st century wrestling. And anyone that thinks otherwise, well, they just haven't even seen me yet. <laughs> He's not had many matches, let's be fair. But yeah. Now, Phil Harmonic, he is a really promising youngster in the in the company. I think he's only 18. So... 44 rated segment for this guy is not too bad. It's a shame his match is not going to be very good because he has 20 popularity. Yep, just as I thought, um, in an abysmal match, Phil Harmonic defeats Assassin with a hu- with a moonsault. 32 rated. Oh no. Hopefully this all starts to get a bit better as um as time goes by. Probably won't. They need to get their popularity up the best that they can. More spine impact moves we need. They're not very consistent. They're holding back. Oh, this was a storytelling match as well, so it was never going to be good. Next segment, we have the Welsh Dragon wins the match uh, against Kelvin Badbury. We had to keep uh, Badbury strong for this one, otherwise he wouldn't lose, fortunately. But, um... Yeah, pretty good match for them at least. Uh, this is the beginning of a new storyline. <sighs> As the Land of the Giants storyline has started. We have Beast Bantam comes down to the ring, practically uh, destroys the Welsh Dragon. Leaving him in, a, a, basically leaving him as a bloody mess in, in, the, in the middle of the ring. Or Welsh Dragon. He's another sort of rookie, but not really. Beast Bantam here. He uh, has just destroyed all of them. Or improvised. Fair enough. I'll script it next time. And we have our next segment. It's an 82 rated segment. We have uh, Jeff Nova and Roland Johnny Stones have a backstage interaction. Where they go into uh, Jeff Nova's office. This is obviously pre recorded because Jeff Nova is on commentary. And. Roland Johnny basically says, 
come on, Jeff. I've been I've been in this company for so long, and you're still not giving me any screen time. Um, I mean, how am I gonna become the 21st century world champion if you don't even give me a chance to fight? I mean, you've not even put me in anything on this show. I'm literally here just to see you go home. <laughs> Jeff Nova's like, well, you just need to prove yourself. Um, he says he doesn't really. He's got other um other talents that are ahead of him right now, and so John, so Johnny's gonna have to wait his turn, and eventually he'll get his shot. But Rolling Johnny then slams the door as he leaves. Uh, basically, yeah, he's getting frustrated that he's not he's not on the show again. Like he is, but he's not. Pretty good, pretty good segment. Then we go into another freestyle segment. Uh, this is Edward and Tommy are back again. 96 rated segment this time. So not as good as the first one. Um, why is this bad? Okay. So they, they come down to the ring. For another 5-10 uh, like minutes. Or they're in the locker room, sorry. Uh, just hanging out. And they're talking about head-to-head. -head, the next, the first uh, pay-per-view of this save. And Tommy's basically asking Edward, "So have you, who's who have you got your eyes on for your opponent for the pay per view? Because you've beaten Adam and Travers, you've beaten everyone else. Surely you get you get to pick your opponents at this point." And Edward Cornell says, "Well, there's not really anyone really worthy of a title shot at this next pay per view. So I'm thinking I'm just going to have the night off. I'm, I'm going to sit at home, just just relax." With the with the rest of the house of business, and then, yeah, that's that's gonna be it. Tommy Cornell is quite frustrated at this because, after all, they're they're both the Cornells. Tommy's saying that, well, the Cornells have always been fighting champions for their entire careers in the uh, in this business, and Edwards just says, "Come on, I, I'm always fighting. I just wanted a, I just want a night off for a change. Can't you just let me have that?" And yeah, they go their separate ways. Tommy leaves the locker room and leaves Edward just sitting there, just yeah. Edward, so Edward Cornell will not be at the first pay per view. He will not be defending his title. Tommy Cornell, uh, obviously frustrated at his younger cousin for not doing it. Then we get into our main event. It's a better match than the last one. We have Adam Matravers has to, has lost to Lee Burton after Lee Burton uh, illegally used the ropes for le for leverage. See what happened here. A decline in physical ability for Adam Matravers as well. All of our main eventers are forty. Great. And there's no storyline, so the match was pretty bad, unfortunately. But it's better than the last main event. And uh, yeah, this is the last segment of the show. We have freestyle segment where we have the new, uh, the new girl. Her name is Holly Lee Levers. Or Holly Leaves, Holly Levers. I don't know how to pronounce that. She is uh, just waving at Lee Burton as he as he celebrates in the ring, blows him a kiss. You know, just things like that. Lee Burton notices her and like gives her a wink back, f finger guns or whatever, <laughs> and then. Because he's cool. He's a cool dude. And yeah, so that's the end of the show. It's just Lee Burton celebrating and as he goes and uh, chats up this girl in the front row. It's a 72 rated show. It's better than the last one, but still not amazing. I need to get better at booking this because I'm not doing a good job so far. I think I need to put um a few storylines together in segments so to get their boosts up bit annoying so i didn't really want to do that it feels like it's um cheating the system a little bit but uh, it'll do i have to do that just to get these storylines up and going get a bit of heat into them 33 popularity uh we increase our popularity in 33 regions lost in six unfortunately that's probably all the british ones which are the important ones and also the uh the not bbc are not gonna be happy once again, it's another show that is not performed at the level that they want. Oh, Rolling Johnny Stones is dating somebody. Nice. 
Okay, Philharmonic, new areas. Where's he, where is he able to work now? America and Canada, okay. Nightmare can also now work in new areas. America and Canada, fair enough. Uh, 1.2 TV rating, 771,000 viewers, not the best. And the Prime are not happy because we did not, once again, struggled to uh, get, <laughs> get all of that, to get the uh, rating we needed. So, that kind of sucks. However, we're on the up. We went from a 64 to a 72, so I'm getting there. Uh, just to see if there's any news here. Uh, where is it? Uh, the viewers think it was pretty good. People seem to have enjoyed the show. Nice. Gargantuan is he's massive. Philharmonic. I have some plans for this man. His popularity has already gone up from 18 to 23 off of one show, so that's good. What's happened here? Oh, that's what happened there. Yeah, he's um, he's looking pretty promising. Who knows what could happen with him? Who else moved? Nightmare moved. I don't really have many plans for Nightmare at the moment. He's okay. Anything else on here? Not really, but yeah. So that is it for this episode. Um, we need to start fixing things because I'm not doing a great job so far. We're getting there though. We've got more viewers in this show. 72 show rating. We need to get to 77. That's the next goal. If I can consistently get at least 77 show rating, which will probably be easier when people are actually popular, then we're, we're getting somewhere. So yeah, that's going to be it for this episode. Um, we have one more TV show and then our first pay-per-view. Uh, head to head. Which is supposed to be a one on one match only, which makes sense because it's called head to head. But um you know main events weren't supposed to be a one on one match. Um yeah, but we'll see how that goes. I do have a tag team match planned, at least for the uh, tag team title. Because at least I want at least I want the men of the men of steel to be doing that. That's what they are anyway. Their tag team name. Yes, it is. So they're going to be facing off with somebody. It'll probably be like a uh, just an impromptu match because I haven't really got storyline going for them except for Three Man Army Takeover. I haven't actually done much with them, unfortunately. I run out of time on this show to get the uh, Three Man Army in, and I also run out of time to get all of this going. So we'll look at the storylines quick. Hellbound is only a 55, that's not great. Land of the Giants is even worse. War of the Cornells is still hot, so that's great. We need at least five, five 65 rated storylines. And if we keep getting um, promos like that, we'll be up there real soon for the uh, Apollo DBF. And where's the other one? This one. I'm I'm annoyed that that doesn't count, because... Yeah, 82 rated, that would mean a great start. Wade, uh, this is going to be Wade Orson versus RJS, in case you can't tell, because I've already ruined the spoiler. It's a spoiler. Oh well. Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Next episode will be the go-home show for Head to Head. I have a few extra plans for that one. I might even just go and record that right now. Yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. I'll see you all in the next one.